Hey, aloha everybody. You are watching Think Tech Hawaii, and this is the Cyber Underground. I'm hosting today because Dave is not well. Andrew, the security guy. I've got Hal Corcoran here from Capilani Community College. And uh, we're going to be digging into a little bit of IoT for you today. Um, maybe we'll just kick the tires on it from a few different directions. Uh, Dave, we hope you get well. I'm um, used to sitting on the other side of the table over there. So we'll see you next week. The professor's out. We have another professor. So somebody here knows what they're talking about. Welcome, Hal. Good to have you I'm back. I think this is your second time. This is. I'm, uh, thanks for having me back. I'm Good. Well, well, we need we need somebody that knows about IoT. And so you know, Dave said you're the guy. So I call it Internet of Theft because, of course, I'm a security guy. So I'm always working on the, you know, those 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 the problems with like IoT. There's a big concern mm -hmm. for our industry. Our, our camera systems are have prop, you know, vulnerabilities. Our access control systems have vulnerabilities. Our intrusion systems, our intercom systems, all those devices uh, that for many years our industry built. Um, uh, unfortunately, we're built with a lot of different types of vulnerabilities. So we've been working on getting that piece of the industry fixed up. You know, it's kind of where, what IoT brings to my mind. But when we say IoT, you know, that covers a lot of ground. What, what, uh, what's the first thing that comes to mind for you? It, it, it covers a lot of ground and, it, and it's continually uh, uh, expanding. It, there's, there's so many things that are networked now. Uh, I mean, from refrigerators and people, people uh, have smart homes. They can control their door locks. They can, they can control the temperature uh, in the house remotely. They, they, can, they can check it on the house, you know, uh, through remote video cameras. We've got smart cities. I came down here on the bus. I could check my app, and the bus tells uh, the system exactly where it is. I, I can watch it on a map coming nice. to see how far, uh, uh, how, how far away it is. Uh, toys, I mean, they're on, like, network teddy bears now that <laughs> talk to kids. Uh, I'm not sure if that's scary or not, but... Uh, that could be a little scary. Yeah. If it gets hacked, it could sure. be uh, uh, especially scary. So th th there are more and more of these devices that are on the... Yeah. Uh, the, the, the network now. And I agree 100% with what you're saying about the security side. To me, IoT uh, today is where you know, the internet was maybe 25 years ago. People yeah. aren't really thinking about security yet. They're thinking about functionality and, and getting all, all, these, all these cool things working. And they, they haven't maybe learned a lesson that mm. we learned you know, back when we put all of these computers on the internet. All of a sudden, we realized, hey, these things are vulnerable to hacking. Mm -hmm. Well, they don't seem to have really gotten that point yet that all of these IoT devices, you put it on a network, it's it's vulnerable to hacking. Yeah, I think maybe our, our our audience may not understand. Most of these devices, if they're networkable, they probably have an entire Linux kernel, an entire operating system inside them, just like a, a, a computer, a server. Mm -hmm. And if you can get on that kernel, you can activate or upgrade or perhaps get that server to do just about anything any mm -hmm. other server could do. Uh, yeah, there, there was one uh, incident that I heard about where there was a denial of service attack. Uh, distributed denial of service attack launched from all these uh, video cameras and sure. people in uh, houses. So they uh, essentially turned them all into a botnet and, and launched an attack on it. So mm -hmm. yeah, well, all of these vulnerabilities that, that, you, that you have on computers that most of us know about, well, you know, the computer is vulnerable to this. Now. All these other, other devices are also, are also you know, vulnerable to these, these type of, but they don't have any virus, they don't have firewalls, the things that we've added onto the computers mm -hmm. to make them a little safer, these devices don't have any of that. Yeah. So they're kind of wide open. Yeah, the, you know, the, in my industry in particular, you know, with the video cameras and the, the access control panels, uh, the, the processors that they've used aren't powerful enough to run like some type of an agent, like you can't put like a Silence agent or, or mm -hmm. uh, Semantic, you can't, you know, there's just not enough, there's not enough leftover processing power, you know, so they've, they give it enough chip power to be a camera and a mm -hmm. server, but not enough chip power to secure the server. And so we're, you know, as an industry, I think um, the Underwriter Labs, you know, UL, which, which does a lot of um, um, standards for like fire systems is what most people are, are, are familiar with UL from. So uh, UL rated fire systems, UL rated burglary systems. Uh, UL's writing some stuff now to start to weigh into that industry. So hopefully the manufacturers will, you know, uh, be asked for hardenable devices and then be forced to go make them because they're not running out to spend more money making their devices, right? They're busy in, in the capitalistic sense of earning money. Mm -hmm. So, you know. And people usually tend to buy the cheapest device. They're, they're not thinking, well, if I spend $20 more for this device, 
they maybe these people thought about security a little bit mm -hmm. more than than this cheap one. Uh, so they, they they usually go with you know w with the cheapest one, and they, and they don't consider you know who has a track rest, uh, track record of you know building more secure devices, uh, and thinking about you know some of these issues. Yeah, especially I know the um, I know I, I saw some I was traveling, but I did see some of your episode previously. I know you guys were talking a little bit about like cable modems, and I don't know if you got into home routers, but there are hard, the same DDoS attack that attacks some of those cameras. A lot of those. Um, poorly made or, or lesser securable home routers had uh, quite a bit of vulnerabilities in them, back doors written into them, hard-coded passwords written on certain ports, and they were able to be attacked and using some of these botnets as well. Um, what do you think someone should be looking for um, in a hardenable device? You know, the homeowner has a hard time going out and buying a Cisco router for their house, right? They're like, this is a $2,000 router. You know, my gosh, mm -hmm. this one over here is, you know, 99 bucks from from Netgear or whoever it's from. You know, what do you think they're missing? Uh, well, I, I, I think if they, if they want to be safe, they need to do some research and find out yeah, like, what companies uh, are releasing patches, mm -hmm. firmware upgrades and, uh, you know, when necessary, and, and, and which companies are just, just releasing things as they are and, they, and they're never maintaining them, mm -hmm. right? Because that, that, that's a big part, keeping, keeping things current, keeping, you know, uh, updates can close them those vulnerabilities mm -hmm. as, as they're uh, as they found and it, it also as as we mentioned a little bit before you kind of get what you pay for if you buy the cheapest device you're going to get the cheapest device yep. and it it may not you know uh, they may not have thought about security at all if you buy one that's that's from a a, a more reputable vendor mm -hmm. uh, it might cost you a little more but they might have thought about some of these issues and it might save you a lot of trouble down the road yeah i, th I really i tend to to advise people anyway to look at you know commercial grade and stay away from consumer grade as much as possible. Minimally get up in into that sonic wall level or, or even smaller Fortinet. But okay, there are some smaller routers from some of the big players that are made with a lot um, better firmware. They're maintained. The patches are maintained on them. So there's there's ways you can get your hands on some gear without you know it's going to be more than the ninety nine dollar router but it doesn't have to be two grand you know there's some stuff in there in that mid to four or five hundred dollar range that's business class you might say it's not enterprise class um, I think uh, for me the other the other reason I talk about IOT being internet of theft is that you know when when we've done some penetration testing on businesses and we uh, maybe they're good and we we fail we really don't get inside from a from a technology from a technical attack perspective you know usually the boundaries are written can i follow the person home and attack them from home if i can get their credentials there then i can use them at the office uh very rarely uh is that allowed so most of the people that we've worked with don't don't want us to go there. they let us go with follow them to lunch maybe within a mile of the office right during mm -hmm. lunch and try to get some credentials from them or whatever but not at home and at home is perhaps where people are most vulnerable because of the these iot devices what are your thoughts about that yeah so if 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 someone can get onto your network through you know a vulnerable I, uh, IoT device, you brought that work laptop home. That's on the network now. I can you know I, somebody can uh, can install some malware that when you take take it back to work now 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 they're on the, the network they want the to come and they can launch that 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 malware and you know do whatever kind of nefarious things that that they're trying to do. So I mean these can definitely be weak points in mm. uh, in your network, each you know, chain is only as strong as the weakest link. If mm -hmm. you've got some IoT device that's that's wide open and vulnerable, and it's on your home network with other devices, it it, it definitely endangers you know everything that's that's on that network. Yeah, I, I don't know how long business will be able to continue to allow you know uh, it's it's um, you know sort of the BYOD thing, bring your own devices and and uh, you know work from home, all those types of things. I think security when you're doing that is going to continue to the cost is going to continue to go up i guess is what uh, mm -hmm. what we should look at you know it's not that it can't be done securely but it needs to have some scrutiny put on it and you can't just trust that the guy's not home with a wide open wi-fi thermostat or mm -hmm. or whatever it may be right i mean who patches their thermostats how many of you patched your thermostats yeah. this year you know who, who even thinks about that yeah. exactly exactly 
So what? Um, so what? What do you? So I, I know you're at, at CAPCC teaching over there. What did the What did the students think about IoT? I mean, do they? Do they? Is it seamless, or do they? Are they aware? I mean, I guess in your classes they're obviously learning about how some how some vulnerabilities that are there. But do they walk in the door kind of? Oh wow, I didn't know. Uh, well, I think I think these devices are just. I mean, they they just grew up, you know, with all yeah. of these different types of devices. All everything can be can can be networked and always was as far as they're concerned. They they don't they don't know what time when it wasn't. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think they understand uh, you know how many things uh, can be networked and, and how many things you can do with, with with these devices. But some of them haven't thought about the security implications of what can you know somebody else leverage this device against me to do you know mm. to, to to steal my information to get onto my my home network. Uh, and some of them just haven't thought about that until you know maybe we bring it up in class and show some examples of some of the different things that can be hacked. I mean, it, there's been research showing. I mean, like if if I hack your refrigerator, I can spoil your milk. That's that's not a big deal. But uh, people have shown that 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 they can hack hack uh, pacemakers, cars. Yeah, sure. I mean, if I can hack your car, I can I can disable your brakes. I can drive you off a bridge. I can do almost anything that sure. I want. So. You know, some of this is 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 high stakes. Yeah. You know. And 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 that the threat vector could have been the refrigerator is sort of the mm -hmm. issue there, right? That that weakest link piece that you talked about. Um, tell you what we'll do. We'll take a real short break. We'll be back with Hal Corcoran back on Think Tech Hawaii, back on Cyber Underground in about a minute. This guy looked familiar. He calls himself the Ultra Fan, but that doesn't explain all this. Why? Why? He planned this party, planned the snacks, he even planned to coordinate colored shirts, but he didn't plan to have a good time. Go, 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 go. Now you wouldn't do this in your own house, so don't do it in your team's house. Know your limits and plan ahead so that everyone can have a good time. You can be the greatest, you can be the best You can be the king, come banging on your chest You can beat the world, you can beat the war You can talk to God, go banging on his door You can throw your hands up, you can beat the clock You can move a mountain, you can break rocks You can be a master, don't wait for luck Dedicate yourself and you can find yourself Hey, I'm Andrew Lanning, and welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii. We are on the Cyber Underground today, and we're talking with Hal Corcoran about the Internet of Things. I call it the Internet of Theft. There's the Internet of Everything going on. There's Internet, Internet, Everything, Everything. I don't know. The world's connected yeah, and getting more and, more and more connected every day. So we left off talking a little bit about some of the, you know, problems with the idea that you can actually connect. Uh, you can get your car online you can get aircraft online trains are online um, obviously some nefarious people could do some nefarious things with things like that and, and cause a loss of life um, so there's there's the that physical attack side that, that could be executed through some of these vulnerabilities and then there's also the data exfiltration piece that is is kind of more common these days um, the um, other than the big DDoS attacks that we've seen happen with these, some of these IoT botnets, um, what, I'm, what I haven't really seen is, a, is a, other than used as a vector to get onto networks, um, all of them masked up to do something else. So they're not, no one's, I've seen it yet ransoming my video stream, for example, right? So you, if you want to watch your camera, send me 20 Bitcoin, you know, or whatever. Um, what, where, do you, where do you think we're headed with, with some of these, 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 uh, these guys are creative, right, in the ways that they're mm -hmm. trying to make money, these criminals. Yeah, though. They'll probe and try to hack anything that you put on the network, and they'll try to leverage it to see what they can do. Maybe we haven't seen you know the ransomware on the video cameras yet, but I I wouldn't be surprised. I hope I didn't just introduce that idea. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe uh, rather than ransoming you to uh, to release your video camera, maybe they'll threaten to release video of you if you don't. Oh yeah, from your yeah, that they came because, off of your home TV or something, yeah, right? Where they so hacked your you, camera. You know, it, I guess it depends where you pointed your camera and what kind of yeah. things you're doing in front of it. But uh, yeah, there was actually a hotel in Europe that got um, they did get ransomed for their their door locks. They had electronic door locks, and so that mm -hmm. that that got 
hacked and then they, they wanted to ransom them, saw the guests couldn't get in their rooms. Kind of, you know, so there's a, using sort of the physical security component against, you know, the mm -hmm. facility. Interesting stuff. Mm -hmm. So we, and we're talking a little bit about the students. So what, um, when they come through a typical course, I'm, I'm, are, are there learning ethics? Are they, are there uh, this, this um, you know, the vulnerabilities of IoT speak a little bit to that, that part of the industry, right? What are your ethics? Because you could obviously go make some money hacking or you can go be a whitehead guy. I'm sure the schools are, we want all these students to be whitehead types. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, what, what's the, what's the how, how do you introduce that type of discussion? Well, we decided early on that if you're going to teach cybersecurity and things like uh, you know, uh, certified ethical hacker and show people how to do some mm -hmm. of these things, that ethics had to be, had, you know, had to be a part of it. So we, we have ethics modules and we and you know that uh -huh. we, we we talk about uh, about ethics and and more than that just all the way along the course we're always you know there's always that kind of kernel of mm. you know, the ethics of of this you know use this power for good <laughs> not for <laughs> they go home and hack their dad right and get his get his bank account or whatever I don't this, know I don't know what students do these days this is not meant you know to get you <laughs> free Wi-Fi access from your neighbor uh -huh. you know. <laughs> You do that, you get in trouble. You're on your own. Yeah, you steal your neighbor's router, right? Because he left the default password and you own it. Sure, we all we've all done that probably. Um, is uh, so how do they take that? So because sort of there's there's some philosophy there, right? Behind behind ethics, right? And so mm -hmm. do you does it is it is it administered? Uh, I guess where, where does that body of ethics come from for the students? That 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 curriculum is it just um. Uh, there are. Uh, some resources out there, uh, okay. I think, uh, like SANS and some other organizations have. Uh, they, 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 they are codes of ethics uh, mm -hmm. for different organizations oh, too. I, I think CISSP has code of ethics, and uh, uh, there's a forensics group that has codes. Of, so we go through different codes of ethics from you know, and, and from some of these these different organizations, and and, and and talk about well, why you know, sure, why is this you know forbidden to do this or why are you required to do that so that they you know hopefully really understand uh what it's it's about it's more it's, it's more than just words on a page it's something you know, like they can understand what the what the repercussions uh, uh, the uh repercussions are mm -hmm. if sure. they decide to go to the dark side rather sure. than to the light yeah and in and that there's a trail of that typically right so you know if you're thinking about that nsa job a few years from now and you've actually mm -hmm. left some some crumbs out of there from some nefarious things you shouldn't have been doing uh, you could be disqualified. Don't think that they don't know. Especially in Hawaii, where you know mm -hmm. there's there's uh, so much Department of Defense and you know uh, in IT uh, hiring consultants, hiring people. If you've got that that smudge on your record, you know w w when you go up for that clearance, yeah, it's it's not going to fly. It's not going to happen. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you'll be down here with the commercial grade guys. Um, <laughs> so the. Um, I had a, uh, was a little bit interested in the the um, sort of the, the the body of work that they come across. So I guess I guess my idea is that if they could come out and sort of help, like so we don't have a um, like a, an AmeriCorps for IoT. Wouldn't it be nice if we could get these students to help the more challenged folks in our community? shore up their homes or shore up their you know they they get given probably these devices right by their grandkids or their mm -hmm. kids and they got all this stuff sitting on that they have no idea how vulnerable they are and they're getting uh, you know um they're getting spearfished because people have been able to pull their emails off of this off of these devices and things like that and they're using the same passwords maybe for all these different accounts if they're managing them at all you know i wonder if the kids could get engaged and kind of offer some assistance out there to the community you know I, I I I would love to do something like that. We we we've talked about uh, trying to create a, a student help desk for not only security but all you know all mm. types of uh, technology problems where where people from the community can just come and get advice, get help, mm -hmm. uh, get assistance, and it's great uh, for the students. I mean, it's 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 it's, it's great experience for them. I mean, they can learn the technical stuff without that. But how do you learn? Customer service and dealing sure. with people. If you don't actually have to have to you know have to deal with with people in the in those types of situations. So uh, yeah, there's there's something that we've uh, we've talked about uh, for some time, and we're hoping that yeah, it, seem, it 
that you can get that going. It seems that the need for IoT, you know, IoT is, cre is creating this need because the it, everyone wants those features and benefits and all the stuff that comes with the enablement of these devices on the networks or you know talking to them with your mobile or whatever it may be. Um, and the security piece that evades everyone, not only, not only just networking evade people, but you know, the security of networking is even worse, right? Mm -hmm. So you, know, you immediately go from a user base that wants to use to people that understand the problem to people that know how to secure it. And it's very, very small up here for this broad base of users. So the opportunity that IoT, I think, or the evolution of IoT brings to, to a, a student base uh, is huge. And I don't know, I don't know how we get get that knowledge out outside of them, right? Because you, you can't educate 10,000 in a year, right? You've got uh, limited size classrooms, limited size funding. How, how are the how are the uh, classes? I mean, are they are they loaded full? Yeah, yeah. Our yeah. Uh, backlogged. Our classes are are usually pretty full, especially uh, you know in the information security. Uh, Area, it's a it's a hot topic now. They, the students mm -hmm. know there's a lot of jobs out there, and uh, and, the, and there's a high demand for people with these type of skills. Mm -hmm. So they're, you know, they they're signing signing up for those classes. Yeah. So yeah, I I can't you know I can't educate that many people, but maybe if I can educate you know, a hundred and send them out. Yeah. To educate you know another hundred more <laughs> and a hundred more, and it will just yeah spread like a, a like a beneficial virus you know across yeah. the. Across the island. Yeah, the IoT knowledge. Yeah, I, I um, what, what do you think's coming next? You know, we hear it today of, you know, they're gone from IoT to Internet of Everything, right? Now you're starting to see IOE used in a lot more, you know, talks in the industry, things like that. Um, what, what, what is the, where's the limit? Deck that's, of cards? Deck of cards going to be networked? That's or? a good question. <laughs> uh, I, I think there are, you know, a few things that won't eventually uh, have some type of a networking technology component. I, yeah. I think it's just going to continue to spread until, you know, uh, especially uh, in the home and in the in industry, mm -hmm. I, I think everything is going to be monitored, everything is going to be networked, sure. there's going to be sensors, you'll be able to tell, you know, exactly what temperature it is in my refrigerator right now, uh, if, 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 that, if that's what I want to do, mm -hmm. or, or uh, you know, Stop my car in the morning, or uh, order my, you know, order my lunch, and uh, I, I think that we're going to be doing, you know, a lot of the, uh, the normal day-to-day -day things that we do are, are all going to go uh, online before. before mm. So well, just we'll live like an automated life. I saw that uh, Jack Ma, you know, the founder of Alibaba, was saying that in 30 years he thought people will work about three or four days a week for about three or four hours a day because the rest will be done for us. You know, and I know the, the big the big money guys are all getting into AI and robotics. Um, what do you think about um, you know the, the humanoid, right? The, the the implanted, maybe someday can fix my brain with a little bit of aug augmented AI or something. You know, I mean, uh, uh, that's uh, I don't know that that's that might be a, a little bit a little uh, scary. <laughs> farther up. And then then we get back into ethics again. Uh huh. Uh, if you make me smarter, is it ethical? I don't know. <laughs> cyborgs? I, I, I don't know. Maybe. Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm sure things that uh, wearable, you know, mm -hmm. technology and things that I can, you know, I can put on uh, that will help me to do things that I couldn't do normally. Like uh, exoskeletons sure. or v X ray vision <laughs> or whatever. Sure, all those kind of things. But I'm not sure about the cyborgs and yeah, uh, the, the brain you know, augmentation. Actually, going to Im implant something into my head to give you know to. To give me more memory, a chip. Yeah. Although I can really use it. Well, if you just if you had just had access to Google and your thinking, right, you could just know everything yeah. pretty much. I'm, I'm sure that <laughs> eventually we will have uh, access to that type of, of of information, control over some type of a, a network device without having to have a, any type of a physical interface. Yeah. It, we won't have to have a keyboard. You won't have to have a swipe. There's it, there, there's going to be a way that I can. You'll think it. I can think it, or I I can you know just move my my hands and and it's kind of like uh, uh, there was a a movie with uh, Tom Cruise where he did that and he oh, all the, yeah. came up and then he just moved the screens until uh. he, he went to uh, 
uh, minority report. Yeah, minority that, report, that, sure. That, that type of report. Well, and voice, voice has sort of had that impact. You know, in the last few years, you had Siri, and then you've got Alexa and all, mm -hmm. the, all those. So now there's not the, you know, you can ask for what you want, right? And those are, I remember when Dragon Speak first came out probably 20, 25 years ago, and it didn't understand a thing I said, you know. You had to really work with it to make it palatable. But now mm -hmm. these, these, these uh, algorithms for speaking are starting to get pretty, you know, usable. You know, I mean, they rarely does it tell me it didn't understand what I said. It might tell me it can't help me with my request, but it understood what I asked for. And it, it, used to, it used to have a lot of problems with accents. You know? yeah. I'm from the Boston area, so I'll say park the car and have a job, <laughs> and Siri won't know what the heck I'm talking about. Is that right? But now they seem to have gotten a lot better where uh -huh. they can actually kind of learn your accent and, uh, and understand what it is that you're... Yeah, so maybe soon we'll be able just to think it, you know, you'll just think of something and there'll be some thought receptor out there that'll know, that'll know you had a question that came through your mind and the answer will just be beamed into your brain. I don't know. <laughs> I'd, I'd like to look that smart, as smart as Google is. Or It's not smart, it's just being able to get information, right? Maybe we're just dumber because we know we can go get information. So we walk around with a lot less of it. You know, I don't know my wife's phone number anymore. I have to, you know, I don't know her number. Nobody knows anybody's number. Yeah. I mean, you know, so are we really, we're probably dumber. We don't need to store data. It, anymore, because it's all stored for us. So yeah. all that data that we used to remember, we, we've just dumped. Yeah. We just don't need it anymore. What are we doing with that with that brain power we used to use? That's a good question. <laughs> uh, maybe we're you know we're doing Facebook and we're playing games with it. You know? uh -huh. I, I hope that we'll we'll start to use it for uh, you know for thinking more. Maybe and to learn more about securing our IoT devices. Uh, yes, you securing know? Our, our IoT devices. You've yeah. got some time and some brain power on your hands. Put it Full to circle. use, folks. Interesting stuff. So IOT, IOE, where are we headed? What, what do you think the security problem really is? I mean, is it, is it going to be the users, or do you think industry will solve it? You know, I mean, there's always that user interface, right, where the people are using the wrong passwords or default passwords. You know, the technology can do a lot for us. The, there's always a conflict there, because people want something that's easy, they can just plug in, yeah. and it's going to work. Yeah. And that's typically not the most secure setup. You, you need to spend more time, you need to know more about it, you know, in order to, to secure it. So this kind of plug and play it tends to work against uh, security. Against security. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, people in, in security, the user is, is usually the weakest link. link there. So that's probably going to continue to be uh, an issue. Uh, I hope that the that the industries will, will start to, uh, to spend more time and spend more money on security. And, uh, but it's probably not going to happen until people demand it. We'll, we'll have some big, uh, you know, uh, attacks that will be all over the news and in this paper, and that's when they'll, they'll say, you know, maybe we need to, to do something about this security. We don't want this bad PR. Mm. So there's an IoT wake-up call coming your way, folks. Professor Hal Corcoran has been with us today on Think Tech Hawaii and the Cyber Underground. Hope you learned a little bit more about IoT, and I hope you lock your stuff down. Aloha.